Hello Goblins. It's Chris, the Old Bitch Pipes, here with a, a sort of review. The urge to make a video just came upon me. I was just in the mood. And I had a tobacco to review, but I wasn't feeling incredibly analytical, but I'm just going to do it anyway. I will say, it's been a long busy week, so I am just chilling right now. But the tobacco I'm smoking is Smoker's Haven Cognac. I don't know if you know the word on these, but uh, there's uh, the idea that they're actually supplied by J.F. Germain's. And um, that would make, if that's true, that would make the Cognac um, Margate, I believe, is the Cognac blend in the Esoterica line. And what I've seen so far is kind of believable. The, um, the cut is very fine, very similar to Margate. The smells in the tin's really interesting. It's got this really it's it's sweet, musty. Um, it's that it's Virginia. You smell Virginia, but with this kind of like sweet, musty smell that I'm taking as the cognac. I wouldn't say I s smell it and go that's cognac, but it's this sweet, musty smell that is very pleasant. The smoke is um, really pleasant. It's a Latakia mix. It's Virginia's, Orientals, the cognac topping. I would say it's Virginia forward. Super Virginia forward. The Latakia is just at a sort of continental level. Way in the background. Which for me right now is uh, just perfect. That's just fine by me. The Turkish tobaccos might be in there as a sort of floral element, but they're kind of, with the cognac topping, there might be sort of like some kind of harmonious accord going on there. The Orientals are kind of difficult to pick out. I really like it. It's a little hard to keep lit at first, but after a little while, once it gets going, then it seems to be a little bit happier. Obviously the cut's really fine, so that helps the burn. Burn's really cool. If anything, I just wish the smoke had a bit more body, but I guess because of the, the, the Latakia being so light, then the, the blend's not very oily, it's, it's leaning towards the sort of the sugary end, if you like. And so the smoke is light. Um, I like sort of producing <laughs> a volume of smoke. I kind of like a, a dragon in that sense, I like to puff smoke, but yeah. This is okay. It's light. Great sort of like summer day smoke, I suppose. Ah. Oh, uh, let me show you. I'm smoking a new pipe. I made myself a new pipe. Why? Two reasons. One, I've been making Viking horns for years, but I've never made one for myself. I thought I've got to correct this. And also, um, the blast on this turned out so nicely, I, I had to keep it. And the other main reason was that I was using this as a test for my new resin. Uh, and so uh, this was the test for the uh, Yeti Blue that's in the new line. And um, yeah, once it was on, I just had to keep it. I'll give, I'll give you a better look. 
So he's a uh, a black and yellow contrast blast, and the grain is just so tight on that. Um, really like the uh, the ring grain coming out on that. You can see here, you can just see, um, sort of like the point of this resin is that it's it's very slightly translucent, which allows you to do these uh, dark colours, but um, because it lets the light through a little bit, you almost glow. You can sort of like see it, it kind of like begins to glow in the sort of like the thinner areas. Creates these sort of really intense colours. I'll show you some of the others in a moment. So that's this guy. Um, one of the reasons this week's been so busy is because I've been finalising and photographing and then posting about uh, this new resin line. Uh, it's called Eldritch Vintage. And it's based on um, fake light. Now, I don't know if you know Bakelite, but um, you probably know it in the form of like old like telephones and things, <laughs> you know, just like black Bakelite. But uh, they made buttons out of it and all kinds of stuff. And it comes as, you know, just opaque and it comes as like clear as glass sometimes. But the most intriguing Bakelite is just translucent. Um, slightly translucent uh, and it allows you to do these like deep colours that kind of like nearly glow. If they were opaque they'd be kind of dull but because they allow a little bit of light through they sort of they just look kind of intense and they they just really sort of jump out at you I think. So I'm going to show you a couple actually. This is from my uh, sample range that I was photographing. So this is the Yeti Blue. You can just see sort of it starts off opaque, fully opaque down here and then just starts to go translucent towards the top. It just lets this colour really... What is the word? Glow. <laughs> um, then there's Yeti in yellow, so look at that. Some of the brighter colours are more translucent, so they let more light through. And so obviously yellow is a very high energy colour uh, and is probably the most translucent in the range. So you can see it's only, it's only opaque at sort of full diameter down here. It just like gets really, really translucent towards the top. Uh, and then uh, Cosmic Orange. Now, actually, I'll show you one of the ones that's it's really dark. It's one of my favourites, but it's it's dark. Um, it's I call it infrared. Uh, <laughs> it's so dark. Um, you almost can't detect the red in it, but um, it is there, uh, and it, um, I really love it. I do. Um, there's another one uh, I call Cranberry Oxide. I just think like these colours they're kind of like um, a colour palette from a different era um, and I think it will, will give pipe makers and, and you guys um, pipe commissioners sort of new options to play with uh, this is Gamma Ray Green he kind of like leaps off the screen so 
you can see again, just becoming translucent towards the top. Kind of like, it really gives this nice effect, this kind of glow. There are a few others, but I can't show you those because they're, um, they're not out yet. Next week, they're out. Where's my pipe? It really is a nice just really easy going tobacco. It's just really pleasant. I wouldn't call it like a holy grail tobacco. I'm not sort of like transported, trying to untangle its mystery, but it is a really relaxing, nice satisfying smoke. I'm still wearing my compression glove. I've had tendonitis uh, down my wrist from my thumb oh, for six to 12 months. And uh, it's much better now, but I have to keep remembering to wear these things. As long as I wear these things, everything's okay. But um, every now and then, I get a twinge. I just hope it just clears up. All right, I think that's enough from me. <laughs> to those of you who are with me through the Listen With Eldritch horror podcast, tomorrow's adventure will be up um, probably six or seven-ish uh, GMT. Uh, so uh, later for you guys. No, earlier for you guys, for most of you guys in the States. And the same time for everyone who's where I am. All right, that's enough waffle from me. Till next time, take it very easy, your loyal pipe maker.